quick and easy tips to sharpen your knife, keep it sharp, and let it do the work for you. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the barn on a little bit of an airish day it is. And what are we talking about? How to sharpen a knife. Uh-huh. The correct way. Yeah? I mean, sure, everybody's made mistakes, but we're going to walk you through some things that have helped me through the last 27, 28 years of cooking that's going to keep that knife sharp, keep it working for you. First of all, I think it needs to be with what? Really good steel. Now, how many of you know Damascus steel? Ooh, that is some really good stuff with this big old knife right here. You get a good edge on a good piece of steel, it's going to last you a whole lot longer than going down at, I'm going to date them right here, going down at TGNY. We'll see how many people remember that little variety store and buying one of them $1.98 knives. As my daddy said, a dull knife will really hurt, but a sharp knife will cut you so quick you won't even know what you've done with it. So, first of all, I think we need to talk about wet rocks maybe even a diamond wet steel. So there's so much difference really in all of them, but one thing they all have in common is what grit are they? Now grit goes back to what, think of it as sandpaper, okay? Really coarse, coarse sandpaper, maybe like a 60 or an 80 grit, where you're finishing a piece of wood that's gonna look really nice, you get higher, 600 grit, 800 grit. That's sort of what we want in a good piece of sharpening material here is what grit is it? How coarse is it? I want to go with a fine grit because knives are going to have an edge that I get and a fine grit there is going to keep that edge. Now if you have an old knife that is dull as the back side of this thing right here, hey, we're going to have to start with a really coarse grit to ever get no edge on it. Now this is one of my favorites. It is. It is what I call a diamond steel. It'll always, usually they used to just come with this, this little piece right here. There was no base to it. You just had this, you'd stick it in your pocket. A lot of you have seen them to where they look like a pair of scissors and they unfold and you got the little piece up here at the top. Let's talk about something that really, I guess to me, means more than what your sharpening apparatus is. That is the correct angle of the knife when we go to try to sharpen it. And I'm going to use the dull edge here. Is it up here? Is it flat like this, what, what angle do we need to be to try to create a, an edge on one side that rolls over when we do the other and you get that fine little piece of fine steel right down the center that's going to keep that knife sharp for so long it is. So we're going to talk about really the double nickel. Now I'm going to get it down here on y'all's end where you can see what's going on right at the edge of that. This will sort of help you think, this is the angle that I need to be. Now, place your knife there. Go ahead and put this finger out there to where that blade is right about the seam of that finger and push backwards. Now, I'm going to turn it this way as there's pressure on it. See that angle right there? That's what I'm talking about, double nickel. Now, I've sharpened enough knives in my time that I don't use double nickels no more. I just go for broke because I sort of know the angle that I want to get on something. But let's have a little bit of water, or like I say, you can use oil, but we need a little lubricant on there of some kind. And when you start with this, it's really best, see it ain't sliding on that sandpaper, so if you've got one of them good rubber mats that you can put down here, then slap that on it to where that don't move, because you need to be able to create a little pressure. So if we're going to sharpen, it's diagonal, I think, is the correct geometrical term. And we're going to go about 4 o'clock. This is 12. This is pretty close to 4, right along in here. You're starting with here. And as you work down, you see the blade. It's going to stick out farther as it gets to that end. Then you come back. Come back again. But if you've got something that you can keep this where it's still and don't move, you need to be able to put that pressure on there to where you can have some pressure against that steel. That way this blade is not bending up or down either way. Go ahead and just keep running her down there. Now we were going this way, right? So we're going to start right here and we're going to come down this way. Now don't put your fingers up here. It'll hurt when it goes by. 
go ahead and put them down here where you ain't going to cut yourself. Let's have a little more lubrication. And just start. Remember, that's pretty close to that double nickel angle. And we're going to start right here. When you get this off here and you get a keen enough eye to where you can see what this steel actually looks like, I want you to sort of keep a gander eye down there and make sure there ain't nothing sticking off the edges nowhere, but lightly take your hand and run down here and see if you feel any indentions, anything in there that is not smooth. Another way you can use this same stone, and when you think you've sort of mastered what you think the angle is, and it's probably really even safer. Take your angle of your stone here to where the double nickel is right there at the back of it, and then just go to sawing all the way down. Now, when a knife is this thin, it's probably better if you can put it on something to where it's gonna stay a little more uniform. So let's move on to the next thing that I would recommend after we have done that. That is what? A honing steel. Now, this is gonna realign your blade after it's been sharp and you've been using it a while because I probably use this more than anything I do because my knives are sharp. Very seldom do I have to go back to a, a sharpening stone to start with, but if they've got that edge, and it's all about that angle again. Now, remember them two nickels? They'll sort of fit right there, and then you just draw. And then you take that blade and you turn it on the other side and you pull. And then when you get good, you can just polish it like this right here. Now what this is doing is smoothing the edge if there was any burrs left there at all. It's honing, making a fine edge on a piece of metal. That's what honing does. And I learned this from my daddy and my grandpa. Get you a good piece of leather, something that's soft, and let's polish that knife just a little bit. Fine tune that last edge that we put on it. That's here to here. And that's all I've ever done to them, folks. I mean, them knives have lasted me forever. Probably the knife that I like the most that I use a lot, if I'm chopping vegetables, is more like a chef knife. So a chef knife, when you're using, is something that you're taking the force to work. The knife is doing the work, not you. You can chop with it, run it around here, and just keep chopping vegetables oh so fine. If I had me a deer up under here that Major had run down last night and I was going to bone him out, I would use a boning knife. That's always been something that's pretty thin to me but pretty short. Something that's got a good handle to where you can get and you can work it. Just remember, you got to keep it sharp. Now, when I'm cutting meat or I'm cutting something like that, maybe a wild hog, deer, elk, anything, I'm going to use it a little while and then I'm going to sharpen it. Don't go too long. Always keep that edge on there. It's going to create less work for you in the long run. Damascus steel. Don't get no meat to me no finer than that. And them come with such a great edge on them that very seldom do I ever have to run it here if I keep it sharp and don't abuse it as to what I can do right here. Just hone that blade every time that I use it and it'll stay sharp. So... Another good brand of knives that I use, and I really like these, Shan, I did, but I cannot pronounce the name because it is something uh, zwilling. Is that what it says? Yeah. These knives have always come to be sharp, and they've always lasted a long time. They're very easy to keep an edge on, same way, same fashion. We're going to break out one more knife. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is my Crocodile Dundee knife. Uh-huh. See these pits of and little grinds that's out of it that isn't right. We're gonna work this just a minute, folks, and see if we can make this what it's supposed to be. So we didn't work long, but we have polished that thing a little that some of them are disappearing as they were there. Now, folks, I have another tip for you too. Say you're out there and you ain't got none of this stuff as equipment to go with you, but you need that knife to be sharp so you can skin that rabbit and gut that deer and put meat up on the table for your family. So what are we gonna do? Maybe you got one of these in camp. I don't know. Maybe you got a ceramic coffee cup. My grandmother used to use one of these all the time. And she'd just draw it in a crock jar back and forth all the time. The edge of a ceramic bowl, like this edge on this, they work really well. You don't have a crock jar? 
Maybe you didn't get to the woods on foot. Maybe you drove your truck. Come on, go with me now. Now, all good pickup trucks and stars, they got a glass that is beveled right here. Ooh, they are so nice to sharpen a knife on. I have used these so many times when I was guiding hunters or had something on the ground that we needed to clean. So don't forget this beveled piece of glass. It works well. There's things out there really, folks, that I don't use. I see a lot of these in grocery stores and stuff. And we'll take that old bad knife and you're supposed to, to put it in there and run your knife this Ooh, away. That doesn't sound good. And it doesn't really even sound good. So I really don't like that deal. This one here, you can see that it's got some fine sandpaper on it right there. And when you hit the switch, it runs. Now, this is not such a bad tool, especially if you've got a knife that has no edge on it whatsoever. You can start here. I don't mind that at all because you can get that edge. But remember, you got to come back over to the other side of it too because we're, we got to have that same edge on it. We thank y'all for taking time out of your busy day to watch these videos. We hope that we brought you a little humor, but also a little knowledge to pass along. Keep your knife sharp, it does. And as always, I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag flying back there wherever we may be to keep us all safe. And it is with great honor that I lift these folks up to you. It is. God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down what? The Sharp Knife Trail. Take 14. Take 27.